WCBI News at 6 starts now. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us. I'm Selena Schaefer. It's been the top story today, the weather. There have been damage reports coming in from across the viewing area this afternoon in the wake of some strong passing storms. WCBI has news crews on the way to survey some of that damage. Now they'll bring us that report shortly. Right now, let's turn it over to Chief Meteorologist Keith Gibson for an update on today's storms. Keith? Hey, Selena, yeah, we are looking at our uh, live Doppler radar network here across our viewing area. No warnings in place, no strong storms. We are done with that. I think the severe weather threat is basically done. But we still have some showers and storms here in Lamar County, Alabama, and back to the uh, west of Columbus there near West Point and Starkville. Some showers, maybe a thunder uh, clap or two. And also in the Tupelo area, we've had some uh, gusty wind, some uh, wind driven rain here, but that is not severe. The strongest storms today move through Prentice and southern Tishomingo counties once again. And we have one big monster supercell storm that produced large hail, a tornado there in southeastern part of Prentice County, and likely another one there near Belmont. And then it shifted into Franklin County, Alabama. So right here is where that strongest storm moved from Boonville to western Franklin County. So that's what we've been dealing with. Now, at this point, we still have a, a severe thunderstorm watch for the Golden Triangle area and West Alabama until 9 o'clock tonight. But as I just mentioned, I really think the severe weather threat is essentially done. Temperatures are really cooling on down. Upper 50s in the northwest, still 70 in Columbus, but we will all be taking a tumble later tonight down into the low 50s. Your full forecast in just a few minutes. All right, thanks for that update there, Keith. Well, this past week, Columbine High School celebrated its 18th anniversary, commemorating all 13 students who lost their lives after two teens went on a shooting spree. This morning, Columbus Police Department, along with Mayor Smith and members of Kappa Alpha Psi fraternity, held an armed training workshop at Columbus High School. They gave students tips on what to do in an active shooter situation. WCBI's Parker King went to Columbus High and shows us that the no what the knowledge from this workshop could potentially save lives. Officers from CPD held an instructional in the auditorium of Columbus High School to give students tips and instructions on how to respond to an active shooter situation. This was joined by alumni members of the Kappa Alpha Psi fraternity and Mayor Robert Smith. In a time where campus shootings are becoming more and more apparent in the United States, it's best to make sure that the students are ready to act if the time comes. What we want to do is talk about active shooter training to the young people just in case they encounter a situation so they have an idea of what to do if it happens. The three types of responses taught at the workshop are run, hide, or fight. Each of these responses were taught with detail, and communication was also taught so that everyone can know what to do and be safer for it. With, with the dialogue, at least start the communication and um, make folks aware of you know, what to do in these types of situations. Um, it, it helps everybody be safer. I mean, just not, not just the students, but the community as well. Some of the students who may not have known what to do are now better off thanks to the outreach of officials who care for the safety of their students. To be honest, if something happened, I probably would have ran, you know, but knowing the stuff that the officers taught us, you know, to help us give us more tips to be prepared. In Columbus, Parker King, WCBI News. Now, this workshop was the first of its kind in the area. Kappa Alpha Psi is looking to extend this to schools across the Golden Triangle. Well, it's nearing President Donald Trump's first 100 days in office. And despite a Republican majority in Congress, there's been major pushback on the majority of the Trump administration's policy proposals. The threat of a government shutdown is looming if something isn't passed soon. Errol Barnett has that story. It's going to be great. It'll happen. President Trump is putting pressure on Republican congressional leadership to make another attempt to repeal Obamacare next week. Trump beamed about the possibility Friday outside the Treasury Department. No particular rush, but we'll, uh, we'll see what happens. But health care is coming along well. Enthusiasm he first stated Thursday at a joint news conference with the Italian Prime Minister. This is a continuation, and the plan gets better and better and better and it's gotten really really good and a lot of people are liking it a lot we have a good chance of getting it soon because congress has yet to see text of a bill to estimate cost and gauge how it might change insurance coverage it's unclear if or when a vote will happen still president trump is sure lawmakers will both address health care and agree on a federal budget to avoid a government shutdown next week okay i want to get both are you shocked to hear that 
As far as keeping the government open, I think we want to keep the government open. Don't you agree? In an interview with the Associated Press, President Trump said businesses and individuals will receive a, quote, massive tax cut under a tax reform plan he will unveil next week. The president is feeling pressure to deliver something significant by next Saturday, his 100th day in office. Trump tweeted his frustration Friday, no matter how much I accomplished during the ridiculous standard of the first 100 days, and it has been a lot, media will kill. But the president embraced the 100-day measurement as a candidate with this contract with the American voter, which now reads like a list of still yet to be delivered achievements, like repealing Obamacare, ending illegal immigration, and passing an Affordable Child Care Act. Meanwhile, on this Earth Day, large crowds gathered across the country today to participate in the National March for Science. Organizers for the events expect thousands to gather to defend the pivotal role that science plays in society. Some carried signs with messages about climate change. Others worry about cuts in funding to programs that support medicine and scientific discovery. The group includes scientists, science enthusiasts, and other supporters. Well, before any of the today's storms really got started, the area YMCA kicked off a fun 5K. It was Life Choice's first ever 5K, and there was also a kid's color run. 63 people participated, and over $1,200 were raised for a preg pregnancy care center. Organizers say it was something fun for everyone to get involved. Now, the running continued across the Golden Triangle. If you were on Mississippi State's campus today, you may have seen hundreds of brightly colored shirts. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Mississippi hosted more than 500 kindergarten through fifth grade students from across the Golden Triangle. The program is called Get Fit to Run. It introduced the students to the benefits of running, physical fitness, and healthy lifestyle choices. The statewide program has more than 1,200 students in 24 Golden Triangle and surrounding county schools. We're building a healthy Mississippi, and we want to encourage kids to be physically active. And then this program supports the Mississippi Standards for Physical Education. It ties in really well with the physical education program. This is an opportunity for kids to learn about running, to share this experience at home with the family. And it just it's a culture of running and, and healthy um, activity. The top three schools with the highest percentage of participation will be awarded up to $2,000 for their physical education program. Well, the outdoor activities didn't stop there. Ackerman held a fishing rodeo for area children this morning. There were 40 tagged fish and prizes were given away to all the participants. Lunch was even provided for all of the children. There were hundreds of fish in the lake for the 300 plus kids participating. We stocked this lake earlier in the week with large catfish. We haven't fed them and we've turned these kids loose on them and they have had a ball. They have caught fish. We need to create the love for fishing in them that most of us was born with and that's what this program does is get the kids on, on the banks. Organizers say the event is a great way to get kids outdoors. Coming up after the break, area women come together to empower one another. That full story just ahead.
You're watching WCBI News at 6 with Selena Schaefer. Welcome back. Two Mississippi State students are both working on earning degrees while also giving back to the women in the community. Seniors Ayala Gostin and Shwanda Brooks are a part of the Montgomery Leadership Program. In order to receive their degree, they must complete a final project in their capstone class. The girls decided to host a women's leadership conference. Though the event sprung out of an academic requirement, both Brooks and Gaston hope to continue the conference for years to come. We first started on thinking about mentoring girls, and then it came into this idea of a big conference on campus because we have we don't have any women's conferences that happen annually. So we did get a lot of funding, and we were offered to get a grant um, for continuing. So I think there's something big that we can continue and also take it around different states. The conference was open to young high school and female college students. Well, local author, author and former Mississippi State University professor presents the last installment to his autobiography. Bookmart Cafe in downtown Columbus hosted a book signing for Dr. Armando de la Cruz. His book, titled Son of the Orient Seas, is the fifth book written by the former professor. In this book, de la Cruz has written about his life from childhood in the Philippines coming to, and coming to America as well up to the present. De la Cruz says that he loves the journey that brought him and his wife, Ruth, to the city of Starkville, and he wants to share it with the community. Because I think the best legacy that any person can lead to his family, his friends, and his community is the story of his life. And so I had, I think, succeeded in putting all that into one package, so to speak. De La Cruz's book is available for purchase at Bookmark and Cafe. Chief Meteorologist Keith Gibson and I will be in to recap today's storms. We'll also talk what will be a windy and chilly Sunday. If you're looking for that sunshine, you're going to have to wait till Monday. We'll be right back. I said a few minutes ago, everything went well this be a rule.
All right, we're back with our weather segment here. Jacob, your first of your weather day here at WCBI TV. Kind of exciting. It I was. Guess, yeah? And it took so long because we've been really lucky so far for much of the spring we, until, the until today. Days. Yeah, today was really the first confirmed tornado we've had in our coverage area all spring long. This is our active storm season. And we got a rogue storm that just decided to rotate. We were talking the last couple of days about how uh, we didn't really expect a tornado threat today just because the wind fields weren't right, but we got that one storm, and it only takes one storm. That's absolutely right. Yeah, one storm, that's it. And, uh, you know, we basically have no severe weather in our area right now, and that's certainly good news, right? Yeah, absolutely. So if we take a look at our radar, we uh, can see those storms are moving out of the area. This is actually the radar loop for the past several hours, and you can see those storms as they slid across the area. They really had some, some, uh, quite a bit of bark and even some bite with them here. Uh, these storms produced some hail as well as some damaging winds and some tornadoes that we were talking about there. The main storms were up to our north. This is going to be in Boonville and Tishomingo areas. And this was the one storm that we had that we were watching all day with that. And if we look closer here, we can see when the tornado warning came out there for southern Tishomingo, Prentiss counties, and off into Franklin County, Alabama. And our radar did a great job of detecting where that main wind shear was. We can see these brighter colors right in here is where we have those areas of rotation, that wind shear, and that really led to those conditions to produce that tornado in uh, southern Tishomingo counties as well as into Franklin County. This is our hail swath as well. We had some big hail. Boonville had reports of golf ball size hail. And you can see that hail core coming all across Prentice counties and southern Tishomingo counties. And that was that one storm. That updraft was enough to produce the hail as well as the tornado. Here's that hail report in Boonville again. Golf ball size hail in town. Then we had one mile east of Thrasher right here. That's going to be north of East Prentice. There was a tornado reported by the local fire department. And then later on in Tishomingo County, then we had a tornado reported. It likely touched down just east of Belmont and moved into Franklin County. And the Shiloh Baptist Church in Franklin County had some damage there. So a damaging tornado did move in through our area today and into West Alabama. And thankfully, we're getting things winding down here. Here's a guy cam time lapse that shows really what happened in Tupelo. Notice the people at the fair here, they had to shut things down as the rain came tumbling through and it got dark and scary for a little bit while. Once that rain comes through, watch how the clouds then go from right to left. That is from north to south, and that's that passage of the cold front that's picking up those winds quite substantially. We can see gusts across the area, 10, 15, maybe even 20 miles an hour, and that's really cooling down our temperatures. We're seeing some 50s on the board, and they're going to become even more popular tonight as we drop those temperatures down into the low 50s, and we may even see an upper 40 on the board. But I think most of us will stay in those low 50s. We're going to keep the clouds around tonight, and then tomorrow, then, we're going to have to watch these winds really pick up. Overnight tonight, I think they will. But then tomorrow morning, we're really going to be blustery out there. And there's going to be winds from 15, 20, maybe even gusts up to 30 miles per hour through the day on Sunday. Once